The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering would like to present this video on using strain gauges when testing beams of various materials in bending. We will be applying a variable load onto the end of two cantilevered beams, one made out of brass and the other out of aluminum. The strain gauges are located here on both beams. All are connected to the computer on which the readings can be seen. Before you can begin, you'll need to accurately measure the dimensions of each beam. Use calipers to measure the width or B of each beam. We are measuring the aluminum beam first. This reading is 25.15 millimeters. Do this five times along the length of the beam to get five measurements. Calculate the average of these measurements, discarding any outlying values, to get the final beam width or B. Do the same with the thickness or H of the beam, measuring five times and taking an average. Repeat this for the brass beam. Now calculate the section modulus of each beam. This is simply the width times the square of the thickness divided by 6. The length of the beam needs to be measured only once, using a ruler. Record the distances from the load application point to the longitudinal strain gauge and perpendicular strain gauge. These are L1 and L2 respectively. Zero the instruments. Now you can perform the test at several load increments. We will be using applied loads of 2 newtons, 4 newtons, and 6 newtons. The values of strain will show up in increments of 10 to the minus 6. When we apply the first load of 2 newtons to the end of the brass beam, note that the strain on the two gauges, which shows up as number 1 and 2 on the computer, increases to some value. Gauge 1 on the computer is the longitudinal strain which corresponds to epsilon 1 in the table. Similarly, gauge number 2 is the perpendicular strain, which corresponds to epsilon 2. Before recording each measurement, wait for the beam to stop moving up and down. The positive reading on strain 1 indicates tension. The negative reading on strain 2 indicates compression. Increase the load to 4 newtons and record the reading again, and once again for 6 newtons. Note that the magnitude of both strains has increased. Repeat this for the second brass beam. For each material and beam, calculate the following. First, calculate the bending moments applied at each strain gauge for each test. M1 corresponds to the moment at the longitudinal strain gauge, which is equal to the load applied, which varies from 2 newtons to 6 newtons, times L1. Calculate the theoretical stress at points 1 and 2, or sigma 1 and sigma 2. Theoretical stress is the bending moment we just calculated, divided by the section modulus. Calculate the experimental normal stress at point 1, or sigma 1 star. This is equal to the modulus of elasticity of the material. For aluminum, we will take the published value as 70 gigapascals, multiplied by the strain at 1, or epsilon 1. V and V star are Poisson's ratio calculated theoretically and experimentally. The theoretical Poisson ratio for aluminum is taken from literature as 0.35. Epsilon 2 star is the experimental strain in a perpendicular direction at strain gauge 2. Since we already know the modulus of elasticity, it is simply the stress at point 2, or sigma 2, divided by the modulus of elasticity. The experimental Poisson ratio is the ratio of experimental strains in the longitudinal and perpendicular directions. In our case, this is simply epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 2 star. Repeat these calculations for the brass beam. The modulus of elasticity is taken as 103 gigapascals, and Poisson's ratio is taken as 0.331. Theoretical and experimental stresses sigma 1 and sigma 1 star should be similar for each load level for both materials. Plotting both against load should result in a graph similar to this.